Hey, yard nerds. It is Sunday, January 17th. Always have to check. And uh, this is the start of a new studio vlog. So last week we complained, complained, completed a big watercolor illustration. This week I need to scan that illustration. I've also got some other illustrations I'm working on. I'm also working on an art drop for St. Charles Parish. So uh, I have coloring sheets and crayons that I'm going to put into this week's art drop. So I'm looking forward to that. And I've also got some in progress, already stretched watercolor illustrations. You guys saw me working on getting those started last week. I'm going to keep working on them for this week. I'm also hoping to continue working on scripting chapter nine of Seven Inch Kara. It's the first chapter in volume three. Uh, if you are new here, hi, welcome. If you're not familiar with my work, you can check out my art on Instagram at instagram.com slash natasoup, or you can read my webcomic for free at 7inchcara.com or 7inchcara.tumblr.com. If you enjoy 7 Inch Kara, whether it's the books or the webcomic, do me a huge favor and leave me a review on Amazon or on Goodreads. If you search for Rebecca Hilburn, you should be able to find it, but I'll put links down in the description below as well. So I am still on my January hiatus, and what that means is I'm not really rushing to create additional content. Basically, the new content I'm working on is just the vlogs that I'm sharing with you guys. Tonight is family game night. I don't really intend on showing any of that. I do deserve to have some privacy as well. But if we ever encounter a fun game, I'll be sure to tell you guys about it because I know artists are usually pretty nerdy and pretty into games, including video games. Speaking of video games, me and Joseph have just started playing Pikmin 3, the deluxe edition, and the amount of high-pitched cooing noises I have made while playing literally the first two maps is off the charts. It's my first Pikmin game. I've always really liked the aesthetic of Pikmin. I think Pikmin's really cute. Obviously, it's adorable tiny things in the human world. What's not to love? I just never gotten to play a Pikmin before. Uh, I didn't really have a lot of Nintendo consoles. I had Nintendo handhelds and I tended to own Sony consoles growing up. So Pikmin's a great game that I just kind of slept on for a long time. So uh, I've been enjoying Pikmin and maybe we'll do a stream sometime where we just like hang out and play Pikmin. Oh no. So um, I think that's about gets us caught up. If you're interested in seeing what I worked on last week, I'll drop the two vlogs down in the description below. I'm trying to get my weekly vlogs into just one video. It's been, it's been a work in progress, but uh, hopefully this will be the week. Cheer for me, guys. All right, so let's dive into the third week of January together. So these are three watercolor paper tests I'm currently working on. The little one to the left is the Sennelier cotton rag paper. The one right above it is the Paul Rubens 100% cotton rag paper. And then the one to their right is the Shoot Noblesse watercolor paper. And uh, I could include snippets of the reviews in these vlogs. I feel like that might be a little bit boring, but that's something I'm working on this week is just the mud tests. And that's where I just try to get the watercolors to create mud on the paper. Uh, I'm trying to work on the mud tests for these this week. And I'm using the Daniel Smith half pans for this one since they tend to granulate, they have intense color, and they do have a tendency to turn to mud. And it is yet another beautiful, January day in Louisiana. This is why I moved back, y'all. I just couldn't take the arthritis in Nashville anymore. You good boy?
guys, so you guys can kind of see the trick there. I just, as I'm doing tests, I just cycle through. Uh, that's not possible when you don't have multiple things to test. It's also not possible when you're doing a field test and you're basically camping the desk for an extended period of time. And it's not always possible if you don't have somewhere else for the stuff to dry. So um, doing three at once allows me to economize my time, at least for the mud test, because that paper is gonna take a while to dry. I really saturate it with each layer. Um, so I, it would have been cool to do like a hyperlapse video of each one drying, but I am using this camera for the vlog and then this camera is being used to record the next one in the series. So not really feasible. That would be a three camera setup, wouldn't it? Um, so you guys can see I record using a phone. Um, I do have a camcorder. It is probably not up to current YouTube specs because people just throw money at YouTube. But uh, this works well enough for me for what I'm doing and for the amount of money I make. I just don't really see the need to invest in something that, you know, capable of recording like a feature film, basically something designed to be shown huge. Um, there are limitations to recording with a phone. There's a lot of limitations to recording with a phone. There's space issues. There's sound issues. If you're using the native recording or the native editing equipment on the phone, there's going to be editing limitations. Um, it's, for art, I think it's fine. Uh, for vlogs, I think it's fine. But if you wanted to do something a lot more in depth, a camcorder is probably better. Uh, nobody asked, I know. Um, but I've also met a lot of people who were surprised when like some of their favorite artists are recording using a phone. And it's like, yeah, it's actually very accessible to do this. It doesn't mean it's, you should do it for fun. That's what I'll say. I do it for fun. That's my recommendation, do it for fun. And if it takes off, that's great. And if it doesn't, well, you had fun doing it. So um, anyway, I don't normally share a lot of like the nuts and bolts of my recording process. So hopefully you guys enjoyed getting a second view on that. Um, I was also stopping to take notes and just in a notepad doc, and then I'm gonna dump that in a Google doc later. Uh, my thoughts on the products as I go. And then when I'm recording the voiceover later, I print that out and I use that to kind of remind me of what I was thinking about, what I noticed at various stages of the test. I often will include product information as well as product links. And then I dump that into either the description as a transcript, because I know some people have um, just different needs. Some people prefer to read it. And then I, I also will sometimes link it as a Google Doc if it's too long. I mean, realistically, I could also very easily turn that into a blog post. It's just really like do a matter of time, I guess. You know, my old blog still gets a lot of hits every day. And this would be a very easy way to make information accessible and searchable in a different way without it taking on additional work from me. But I would like to move away from the Blogspot blog and move to having um, a very curated selection of posts over on my actual website where Kara is hosted. I want to get everything on my site. Um, so that's one of the things that's kind of kept me from putting more time into the old blog itself. All right, anyway, that was a sneak peek, a little inside look at my uh, recording process. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's been time lapsed multiple times, but it really doesn't take that long to do one step of three pieces. I think it took about mm, 45 minutes, so not too bad. Um, but of course, that's just one step out of the three steps I'm doing for the mud testing. There was a step, step that came before that, and there's going to be a third mud test after that. I figure if it can hold up to three dousing with water, scrubbing and dousing with colors, then it could probably hold up to the actual field test where I try to paint, where I actually paint a watercolor illustration on the paper. So um, anyway, happy Sunday, y'all. Okay, so it is Sunday evening and uh, we're about to have dinner, but I thought now is a good chance to ask mom which one of the craft kits she wants to do tomorrow. So I set out 
Mo most of the ones we talked about with a couple of extras. Yes. So um, we have so the, the watercolor burning. kit from a while back. We have the wood burning, and I have lots. These are from when I was doing those painted mm -hmm. signs, and I never used them. So we got lots yeah. of blanks this for is that. Cute, though. That's, that's with the yeah. That's the, the bowl. Mm -hmm. That might be interesting. And then we got the rock painting kit. Yeah. Well, let's take a break from the painting. Okay. Okay. Week. So either the paper bowls or the wood burning. Now, what is this? That's a watercolor kit from Five Below. To do what? It just says watercolor kit, okay. but it has like canvases, and I don't. I've never done okay. watercolor right. on now, canvas. Now let's, let's do the bowl. Okay. That looks interesting. All right, so bowls will be tomorrow. Hey guys, it is Monday, January 18th. So today we have our chill stream, live stream. Um, and for those of you who haven't checked one out yet, it's basically where we try out a craft or a craft kit. If it's a craft kit, we give it a review. And uh, it's just me generally meant to be like really low key and chill. Of course, everyone in my family is high energy, so I don't know about that. But uh, the goal is for it to be low key and chill. So today I'm going to continue working on those three watercolor paper tests that I'm already working on. Uh, bah, 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 bah. I've got some fresh zines that I have folded. They need to go in packets and maybe I need to go drop those off, but I don't see that happening. And I've also got some stuff to print. I finished that Mardi Gras illustration. I guess I'll show you guys. And uh, it's time to print it onto watercolor paper. So we've got a lot to do today. Let's go ahead and get started. Where you want to go, Bo? Oh, you T-S-I-D-E. It's a pretty day, isn't it? It's everybody's favorite, recording a screen. So that is the digital sketch of the Mardi Gras mini print I'm working on. I'm gonna print it out onto watercolor paper and I'll probably ink this one and that way um, I can utilize it as a coloring page. Ah uh, yes, the most exciting part of the process and totally not just a bunch of standing around and waiting on the printer. Oh look friends. I'm still practically out of everything. So while I wait on my printer, these, wow, okay. These are the watercolor tests from the other day. Same order as yesterday. And uh, I'm gonna do a third layer on these today. So these are the resulting bowls from our chill stream. I still have to do like two coats of the glue stuff on these honestly the one we did with the marbled paper that we made last week if it actually comes off the mold that one's going to be my favorite i'm not really big on craft kits where they basically provide the decoration in addition to like the idea um i understand why some people do it's just a personal thing i like stuff where I've had a bigger hand in the aesthetic creation of the whole. So if this turns out, um, I don't know, it's kind of neat. I don't know. Uh, uh, the, the paper ended up more brilliant too. That was a good use for the printer paper, uh, marble paper. So it's kind of neat. Um, I don't know if I would do a bowl with that, but maybe decoupage that. Anyway, that was today's chill stream. Hey guys, 
guys, it is Tuesday, January, I want to say 21st, let's see, 19th, no, I was wrong, by two days, and I just don't feel like working, I know, that's, um, I think mostly it's, like, I feel like going out and doing something, like, I'd rather run errands today than, like, sit at a table and work, but fear not, I am going to sit at a table and work, I'm a big girl, and I had to make myself do things. Uh, so yesterday, I finished penciling the Mardi Gras illustration I'm working on. And I actually need to go buy some more Viva paper towels if I want to stretch this, because that's my paper towels of choice. Uh, they have like a textureless variety that works really well for stretching watercolors, so that's what I like to use. And I'm kind of hoping I can finish up these mud tests on the Noblesse, the Paul Rubens, and the Snellier. So paper towels, maybe run some errands and finish these things up. That's on the docket for today. What you want, Bo? It's warm today. Oh, the dust. What y'all doing? Um, I'm working and he's whining. I don't think he's actually whining. I think he's looking at you. Look at you. Oh, 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 oh. Time for the lick, lick, nip. I'm not, I'm not licking or nipping yet. So, Bo, when he is super comfortable, will lick the underside, the soft bit of your arm, right where it connects to the elbow. And if he feels yeah. super good, he'll nip it very gently. This is such a thing that we refer to it as lick, lick, nip. He's being a sweetie pie, though. He loves being outside with his papa. He does. All right, making a another little library drop off.
Tuesday night Walmart trip. Y'all want to know what to wear to Mardi Gras? This it's is what you... I know, it's Mardi Gras. It, this is what you wear. It says it lights up. See if you can find the switch. If they made this for women, I would own them. one. I said that the last right time, here. too. I know. It's probably the cheapest fabric. Oh, it is. No, there's thing. a wire or something right here. Why does it light up? I don't know where the, it's the buzzer the, it is. It says it's in the pocket. I thought. Well, oh, I feel a wire pocket. here, too. I don't know. Uh, oh, it has an interior pocket. Aha! Let's see this. Oh. Oh, there they go. That's Look at that. not as impressive as you would think. I was expecting purple. No purple now lights. I'm kind of curious if they have a, a women's size. Okay, so this is going to be our January 5 below. It's about mid-month, so let's see what they've got. They've already got sections that are just completely wiped clean. Ah, uh, just a little bit too late. Spend too much time in Walmart. We'll just have to come back another time. <laughs> channel and instead of just sitting on them and waiting until we got to them I thought it'd be cool to show you guys so we're gonna start with the stuff from Amazon first I know what all of it is fortunately so um I've wanted to try needle felting for a while and I always kind of felt like it was probably more challenging than I could teach myself and then I saw the craftsman uh, steady crafting do it on his channel and he made it look really approachable and there's some pretty good kits or there seems like there's some pretty good, good kits out there so for one of our chill streams since my mom expressed some interest in doing needle felting as well I picked up some supplies for needle felting I also thought it could be a good kind of quiet and repetitive hobby that involves a lot of stabbing good for frustration have a knife in here anymore. Someone heard me talking about stabbing and removed the knife. Yeah. Oh, that's not going to cut it. That's a palette knife, not a cutting knife. Here's a rotary color cutter from Dollar Tree. Let's see if we can slice the tape with that and not slice ourselves. Yep, slice the tape. And I'm mostly just checking to make sure, I'm not disassembling any of the kits or anything like that, I'm just checking to make sure all the pieces are here so that once we do the chill stream, it's not like, oh, we can't do this project, we're missing one key ingredient. And this one's kind of cute. This is a needle felting kit, but they wrapped it up like a present. Looks like, ooh, you know, all of them ended up including the foam, and I thought none of them were going to include the foam because when I looked at the instructions or the included materials, uh, none of the kits mention the foam, but the foam is actually a pretty useful thing. So it's cool that they did indeed include the foam. So these 
these are going to go in the dining room with the um, other craft kits. And then we have some things from AliExpress that I ordered a while back and I thought they were going to take a while longer to come in. That's why I gave my mom's address. And they ended up coming in pretty quickly. Ooh. Wrapped in typical AliExpress. Very protective. Don't want anything to arrive. Totally broken. I still don't see any skizzers. I'm going to have to get up and go get scissors. Yeah, because the rotary cutter, while cutting, does not do such a good job. <laughs> the rotary, <laughs> did you guys see that? I cut with such force that this very cheap rotary cutter literally fell apart in my hand. <laughs> the blade is... <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's a good thing. Oh man, now I gotta figure out how to repair this. Oh, that's not worth a buck. If it breaks as you're cutting things, that's not worth a dollar. And this is all stuff that other people have recommended, as in they like it and they've used it. Or I've used it and I like it and I wanted to kind of re-up my supply. But of course, I'll definitely talk about it for you guys. And then one more bag. Ugh. It's it's got that like plastic off gas smell but it's from the mailer. Not really something I want a face full of. Because we didn't learn enough of a lesson with the first rotary cutter. And I still haven't gotten up to get scissors. Bags within bags. very safely but I can't get into any of it because it's all wrapped like six times this is one I've been thinking about for a long time so they're tone tan rounds, and you guys know I really like tone tan paper. I like doing markers on tone tan. I thought this was supposed to be for watercolor. I am going to try watercolor on it anyway. Why not? And then, finally, our last over-engineered package. And while I have your attention, if you back the 7-inch Kara Kickstarter and you haven't filled out the backer survey yet and you haven't received your book, please take a minute to fill out the backer reward survey so I can get your books out to you guys. If you did fill it out and you still haven't gotten your book, please reach out to me and we'll try to figure it out. There's, that is smaller than I thought it would be. Um, there's been a lot of like mailing weirdness with US, huh? No. Not with USPS? No. What I mean is like USPS has been some, some backers' books have been just shuttling between two towns One. since December. Yeah. Well, another backers' book arrived and it looked like the mailman had kicked it, the mail person had kicked it down the street. That's what I mean by like USPS weirdness is there's been a few damaged books from a mail carrier. Maybe it got eaten in the processing center, I don't know. And then one book is late. So I'm saying if people haven't gotten their books yet, 
to let to reach out so we can look into it or I mean um if you have the tracking number please contact your local post office and see if you can resolve it with them because once the books have left ship Bob they're out of our hands but if your book um, if the mail can't handle the issue to your satisfaction please don't hesitate to get in touch with us and we'll we'll make it right what's most important is that you guys have a good experience with volume two And these were recommended by Maddie in the paint box. And I thought these were really cool. And they've lived in my cart for a long time. So these are Supervision and they're like super granulating colors. So they granulate out into two separate colors. And there's a half pan and I think these are two, yeah, these are tubes. Oh. You get, a, you get a fair amount. So I look forward to playing around with those. Let me switch the camera view and get this cleaned up. I've ordered from Dingy Boutique Store in the past, and like I got that um, Superior Watercolor Palette, the collapsible cup one. I really like a lot of what they sell, and they packaged everything really securely. Nothing arrived damaged. Everything arrived in good shape. So if you're ordering art supplies from AliExpress, Dingy Boutique Store delivers what they promise in a timely fashion and in good condition, which when we're ordering from AliExpress, that's what we're looking for. And their prices are pretty fair too. Um, anyway, let me change the camera view so you guys can get a better look. Okay, so these and this are from Amazon. This is for some of my art drops. These are things for needle felting. And uh, just at a cursory glance with zero experience with needle felting, but some experience with sewing and fiber arts. Everything seems to be fairly decent quality for the price. Uh, we'll talk about this a lot more though when we actually do the needle felting craft stream. We'll talk about the quality of the materials and the quality of the kits and how well they actually help you do the thing they're designed to help you do. This one is designed to make many small, very cute animals. Move those aside. And then these plus these are from AliExpress. So a lot of watercolor paper, a lot of watercolor rounds because I really like the round watercolor format. It's just really inspiring for me. It kind of gets me thinking about composition as well as some superior watercolor paints and some tone tanned rounds that I'm gonna try these with marker and I'm gonna try these with watercolor. Gouache, if, if this paper is sturdy enough, gouache would look really good on this too. So that's just a sneak peek of what's coming up on the channel and what came in the mail today.
being a pretty busy day. Uh, had a case of itchy happy feet, so needed to get out of the house for a while, ran some errands, and then when I came home, I was actually able to focus on completing the tasks that I needed to complete, and I had the materials to complete them. So not only did I record uh, an AliExpress haul, in addition to me showing you guys what I got off of AliExpress, but I also finished up the first part of the reviews for these three watercolor blocks, the Noblex, the Paul Rubens, and the Sennelier. So next for these are field tests, and that, that always takes a while, so uh, that's going to take quite a bit longer. I also stretched that Mardi Gras illustration that I've been working on, and I hope that after, um, I want to kind of get started on it before Art Squad, but I hope after Art Squad I can have my table back and I can really focus on getting that Mardi Gras piece done so that I can offer it as a print as part of the Mardi Gras 7 Inch Care promotion I'm hoping to be able to do. So uh, I feel like I've definitely earned my rest tonight and uh, hopefully you guys got to see how much care goes into taking notes for these kind of reviews and these kind of tests. Um, I don't just try to memorize things. I don't try to keep it all in my head. I try to take notes as I go along, not only so that I have them to reference when I'm doing my reviews, but also so I can share them in the transcript, share them down in the description below, because not everybody learns the same way. Not everybody has the same learning style. And you know, the more I was thinking about it, the more I was like, I could take those trans transcripts, clean them up just a little bit more, turn them into blog posts and just reuse them again and make them accessible to even more people. So that's definitely something to consider. So today was Tuesday. Tomorrow is Wednesday. <laughs> uh, I think I've got some art squad prep to work on tomorrow and also I hope to get some progress made on that Mardi Gras piece, but I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Hey Art Nerds, good morning. It is Wednesday, January 20th. It is the inauguration of Joe Biden, so I know a lot of folks are celebrating that. Uh, I'm still taking the holding my breath approach, waiting for the other shoe to drop. Uh, I've mentioned on this channel before, I grew up in an abusive situation, so that's just a learned behavior for me. But it has been beneficial in the past because often when you think it's over, it's not quite over. So I'm not pretending like I know anything. It's just my years of experience growing up in a bad situation, kind of being like, mm, let's give it six months and see. So I'm not here to yuck anybody's yum or rain on anybody else's parade. If you're celebrating today, that is fantastic. We all deserve an opportunity to celebrate. 2020 has been a hard year. 2021 promises to be also very challenging. So uh, I say take any opportunity you can to celebrate any event that you want to. I mean, me, I'm remissing that. I should have celebrated the Volume 2 launch way long past.
like in December, but it, <laughs> everything seemed to arrive on like the 25th or the 26th. So that wasn't going to happen, but we still need to celebrate the volume two launch because it's important to celebrate your victories. So uh, today I am going to be doing some prep for art squad. So we have a mini lesson for them tomorrow on drawing anime eyes kind of based on what they've said their interests are. So this morning I created a couple of different templates. I've got a multi-face template and then I've got a large face template and I'll go ahead and share that with my art nerds on Patreon. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw different styles of anime eyes kind of emulating different creators who I admire. And then we're going to talk about how you can take elements of that to create your own style. So I think, I think it'll be a good lesson. Uh, it's like an art school lesson taught to nine through 17 year olds. So I'm all about that. I'm all about using what I learned at SCAD, getting my master's degree and then giving that knowledge to way younger people because, uh, you know, just try to make art education a little bit more accessible. So I'm actually looking forward to that. We've also got a warm up plan. Uh, I'm not super sure what direction we're going to take the warm up in. Me personally, I'd like to see the kiddos draw self portraits as their warm up or pick someone else from the chat to draw. But uh, it kind of depends on what their interest level is and what Miss Sarah wants to do. And there's always a lot of factors when you're teaching kiddos. And you just kind of have to go with the flow uh, or try to get them super hyped about what you're planning on doing. You can't, I mean, you can force kids to do things, but then they're going to hate it. If you want them to love things, you have to make it collaborative. You have to show them why it would be fun or why it would be beneficial or why they should be excited. Or maybe they should draw their OCs. Portraits or their OCs would be good. I know a lot of them, that's their end goal is they want to draw their own original character. So that's why we're showing them how to draw eyes and we're going to show them how to draw hair. We're going to show them how to draw hands, all the things they want to learn how to draw in little 15 minute bites. Uh, I think the goal really is to think, teach them how to think about these things analytically and critically so they can apply it to their own art later. And that is a skill that will benefit any artist of any age for the duration of their art career is learning how to see and learning how to adapt. So other than working on that, I'm also working on the Mardi Gras illustration. Um, so I need to have a clean desk for tomorrow because I record Art Squad or I record my share of Art Squad from this desk. I use this Logitech webcam over here. And actually we have a way less expensive Chinese webcam that's supposed to be a Logitech dupe. And I really want to do a comparative review of that since so many people are getting into streaming and it's nice to have a decent quality camera if you're streaming. I mean, I have these cheap Logitech ones as well and those are not super good at all. They basically are great for web, like face cams, and that's about it. So uh, what I want to do for this is I want to get mm, maybe some of the background toning color, and that always takes a while to dry anyway. And this was printed on, now I'm not going to remember, because I've been working on those watercolor tests, and it's just going to make me forget. I have to go grab it out of the other room. It's Saunders. It's on Saunders. There it goes. Like, it's a British paper. It's uh, was printed on Saunders. I've painted on Saunders before. I like Saunders. So uh, this should go well, hopefully. And uh, I hear my husband come. Nope, 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 nope. Walk on by. Um, what else am I hoping to do today? I've got some video scheduling stuff to do. Uh, I want to schedule that AliExpress haul so it comes out before this vlog. And because uh, I don't want to lose my lead. And um, just general, oh yeah, I've got some art drop packages that I want to put together because I just finished distributing the last art drop that I had assembled. So I want to do a new set of art drops with those coloring pages and also with some mini comics. So I'm um, looking forward to that as well. I've really been enjoying doing the art drops. Um, it's nice to be able to get my art out into the community, even if it's in a really small way. And it's cool to be able to make what I do accessible to other people. And later on in the year when I can make or print some of my larger zines, it'd be cool to hide a couple larger zines or go dig in and maybe I should hide a couple zines anyway. Uh, basically my goal with that is I have two goals. One, to promote myself as a local artist, to promote myself as a teaching artist and to promote my comic and my YouTube channel. You know, gotta get a little taste for me. But also to encourage people, hopefully, get them thinking, oh, hey, I could do this too. Or, oh, hey, I want to draw like this too. To get those wheels turning and maybe they'll join Art Squad 
or maybe they'll start their own artistic journey by learning on the school of internet or maybe they'll take art classes you know who knows but down here if you were not in talented art or you didn't come from a family of artists it seemed like there weren't a lot of resources and it's changing a lot now like the library does a lot i work with them so i know they do a lot to promote art for anyone who wants to learn art and uh, this is just a little way of planting the seed and hopefully making it more accessible to more people so uh i'm going to be doing the anime eyes i'm going to be working on this and i'm going to be putting together art drop packages and maybe maybe i'll actually have time to do a shizen watercolor study today that'd be cool but we'll see we'll see because i gotta have this desk clean before six tomorrow for art squad so let's get a move on huh All right, so I am putting together some more packets to put in little libraries. So I have some coloring sheets I put together a while back. These are all from different volumes of Lilliputian Living. I've got five packs of crayons. So I guess I'm gonna make five of these. I have some assembled mini comics. I have some not yet assembled mini comics that I need to fold. I've got some other packets that I need to finish up that have original art in them. And I've got some postcards, some business cards, and some Ziploc bags to put everything together in. So the way this works for me is I put these packets together and then I go hide them out in little libraries. And the reason I put them in Ziploc bags is it is Louisiana. None of those little libraries have a gasket around the door. And I would really prefer for the stuff to not be ruined before people get it. So let's go ahead and put together some coloring book and zine packs, huh? meeting so basically I recorded a tutorial where I demonstrated how to draw various popular anime and manga styles 
And then I also did a demonstration on how I draw Kara. So this helps me kind of get into the right mindset for tomorrow's art squad. It helps me kind of refine some of the processes and it means I have a follow-up video for kiddos who didn't quite get it the first go round or they'd like to walk through it again. I find that having um, educational resources that people can access after the class or before the class helps with knowledge retention for those who actually want to go out and do that. I mean, a lot of people say they want to do that and then they don't, but then there's a few people who get really into it and they want to learn more and I want to make that as easy and accessible for them as possible. So uh, next we are heading out to Gonzales because we've got some family business to take care of and that's probably going to be the rest of my evening. But before I say goodbye, I wanted to show you guys the progress I've made on the Mardi Gras piece so far. Uh, hopefully after Thursday I can really get into it and get some good progress on that. So I guess we're not going to be doing any Shizen watercolor painting tonight. We'll just have to hold that for another night, maybe tomorrow night even. So, uh, all right, I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow.